What are you going to do when you're under pressure, when you're under stress? Because you put in so much work to get here. And I would hate for you to redline. Nothing's working. We've all been in that situation. We try to drop too high, it gets crushed. We try to drive, it goes in the net or goes out. Our opponents are letting out balls go. We can't even put a volley away, right? And if we get mad, what happens? We just play worse. So what do we do? Pickleball lovers, let's not forget to have a good day. And let's get started right now. Reactions, like the man in the top right hand corner, you'll probably see it in about 17 seconds. Really take away energy from your opponent, right? Ruins chemistry. I'm divorced, I know how to do it. Joking aside, reactions like this will hurt you more than your opponent in tournaments, period. And we know we can play so much better. But we're playing like dog, right? So how do we turn it around because we're in this moment right now? We don't choke, we call timeout, but what do we talk about in that timeout? If we get mad at ourselves, we're gonna let our partner down more. So what do we do? Step one, exhale, right? Deep in, deep out, that's step one. There are many breathing techniques we can use to get rid of stress, so let's go over some right now. The most easy one, box breathing. To do box breathing, you inhale for five seconds. You hold it for five seconds. You exhale for five seconds. And then you do it again. It's just like box. Hopefully you'll be a little calmer. Okay, that's breathing. Everyone knows that. What do we do next? Negative self-talk. Joe, what are you doing? No, no, no. We don't want negative self-talk. Positivity is key. And let me ask you at home, is your self-talk positive, negative, or neutral? I hope it's positive. I'm assuming it's negative. I don't know. You'd have to tell me. Why do you do that? It's very... Normally when we make our mistakes, we throw a paddle, we yell. I mean, we all don't do that. I do sometimes. That's definitely not what we want. And if you're at home making those mistakes, do you get angry? Because if I'm watching you at rec play, I assume you are. That's definitely not what we want, right? So let me ask you the most difficult question in the world. How do we change? How do we stay calm under pressure? We have a choice. There's a good story. Clint Eastwood was playing golf. And his partner, this last year, his partner said, Clint, how old are you? He said, 88. He said, 88 on Monday. And his partner said, wow, that's wonderful. What are you doing? He said, I'm starting a new movie. He said, how do you do it? He said, I wake up every morning and don't let the old man in. Try to be constructive. Even if you're down 9-2, don't think about how bad you played because you probably did play awful, right? Negative self-talk. Let's be constructive. The past doesn't matter after all. How do we beat your opponents being down 9-2? because I think if we have a strategy, we could do it. And if we're thinking about our opponent's weaknesses, what are we not thinking about? Ours, right? We just deflected. I'm very good about that in psychology, but what I'm saying is we're looking at our opponent's weaknesses now. We're not looking at our major flaws, and we did play horrible so far. And when your partner sees that your thinking has changed, you're talking about your opponent's weaknesses, that thinking is going to change and you're going to play better. I know. We, we are writing our own life story every day, and yet we don't think about it. What, what, who do we want to be? Even if we had a game plan going in, throw it out. We're down 9-2. Let's do a different strategy. By not thinking about how we messed up and thinking about how our opponents messed up in the prior points, we kind of change the dynamics of the match, or at least in our heads. By discussing these new opponent weaknesses with your partner, we're creating new experiences, right? We're not in that same old crap. We're not in that same negative train of thought, right? Move a muscle, change a thought, change conversation, change strategy. The Canadian in the top left-hand corner is getting picked on. Dinkin, getting owned. He hits a lob, genius Roger. 
Roger is an all-around amazing guy. I think most Canadians are. But that's something you can do to throw your opponents off balance because they're not expecting a lot from Roger. Who's six seven? To summarize, we're revisiting the match. We're looking at opponent's mistake, seeing what we can do differently, and we're not looking at our mistakes. By just talking strategy, we become more analytical, right? Less emotional. What opponent is struggling? Who are we gonna target? Are they really struggling with that inner foot dink, right? Are we gonna keep them back at the kitchen? Are we gonna go for a serves more? Are we just gonna drop? There's so much we can do. And by talking strategy, removing emotions from it, we simplify the problem. This is not about winning the match. It's about not giving up. It's about doing the next right thing and not letting your partner go. In a nutshell, sports psychology is deciding whether you're going to be a fighter or a victim. The mental toughness begins with believing you can win and you can beat anyone. What you should do always is try to scout your opponent. You give them what they do not want. The bangers, you give softballs or you lob them, get them out of their game. Not only can we come up with something extremely useful, it's going to change our mood for the better and may change our whole entire philosophy on life. Are you still struggling? I am too. What else can we do? Because when we are under stress, it is very tough to collect ourselves. So in a tournament, if we start focusing on our footwork when it's really windy, there'll be one thing we can do to get out of our own head. Try to focus on small, basic things. One thing. Watch the ball, bend your knees, and get lower. If an athlete says, I want to be the best, Bill, fine. How badly do you want it? By focusing on one small thing, you'll be amazed at how well you concentrate because you weren't concentrating too well before. And if all else fails, try stacking, switch sides. This can help you cover your weaknesses, especially when you're struggling, so throw it on your partner. For example, if you're really struggling with that forehand drop or drive, have your partner stack, play forehand middle, play the backhand block, right, so we can focus on one thing. And if you are really struggling with that third shot, try hitting a top spin lob. If you do get that third shot, because it does surprise your opponents and it can throw them off balance and it can give you some rhythm. Along the lines of focusing on one thing, try isolating one of your opponents. It will help you concentrate, like I said before, because after all, maybe it's that time to be stressed, not our. You've got to pay a price to be the best. The best pay a big price. You won't remember all this, but I'd recommend focus on one thing, keep it simple, talk to your partner, put the blame on your opponents, and stop thinking about your weaknesses. So just take one thing out of this video. It's a lot to remember, right? Breathing works. What do you do in a tournament when nothing works? Your partner's mad at you, you can't do anything. You've been in that situation, leave your comments. Pickleball lovers, save 10% on any paddle. Let's not forget to have a good day. Because I've always believed that some of the performance issues that I deal with cross all sports and, of course, cross business and education as well. Because the human being, when called upon to perform, it's something that's challenging, faces all the mental and emotional barriers that I was talking about before.